So we'll close this and we'll go into the Weed Research and Information Center. And within that center, at the very bottom, it'll tell you there's a Weed ID tool. So we open the Weed ID tool and we select Weed ID tool. So at this point, what would you like to identify? Okay, I'm going to choose this one because I just thought taking over kind of an area along a stream. I'm kind of interested in what it is. So this plant is probably something you've also seen cultivated in a city too because it's a, it's a common cultivated plant. Yeah. All right. Would you say the first characteristic in question is asking you is whether it's broadleaf, a grass, or woody? Woody. Okay. <laughs> so we go into woody. Okay. So we went to the woody characteristics. Now the way this differs from the CDs is that you get to pick anything you want in the CDs, whereas this gives you only a certain set of questions of which you have to answer. So we're going to answer these questions, or you're going to answer these questions when I ask you. Now, the first thing you did tell me was that this was a riparian weed or a weed in the stream side. So I can go ahead and choose that and say it was found in a wetland or a riparian area. Mm -hmm. So now it's asking you questions. It's saying growth form, and what it wants to know is, is it upright with a single trunk or stem, or is it upright with multiple trunks and stems? Just had a single trunk or stem. Okay, so let's go that direction. The life cycle is obvious. It's a, it's a perennial since it's a woody <laughs> plant and there's not going to be any tendrils. So let's go to leaf arrangement. Is it opposite, alternate, world, or basal? It's not going to be basal as a woody plant. Nope. They are... One? Uh, yes. <laughs> one leaf per node. Yes. That's an alternate. Okay. Uh, is the leaf simple or compound? It's a simple leaf. And does it have any lobes on it? No lobes. Okay, so it's not lobed, simple leaf. Are there any tooth or teeth on the margin of those leaves? I don't see any. So we say entire, not tooth. Okay. Is there a petiole? There is a petiole. Yes. Kind of okay. short. So it's present, but it is short. There's no spines on this plant. Nope. Right? They're absent. One thing I didn't ask is, is it hairy at all? So it's silvery, so I kind of guess, but it doesn't feel very hairy. Yes, yeah, so they're probably small hairs, but take a look at the hand lens and tell me if you see. Oh yeah, small very hairs. small hairs. Okay, so we're going to say it's hairy, it's present. Uh, spines and thorns, nope. there's no spines and thorns on that, so they're absent. A leaf venation, it's going to ask you whether the, the veins are parallel Pinnate no. or palmate? Pinnate. Pinnate. Okay. So the other questions that it's asking you deals with flowers or stem characteristics. And let's just ask, search the data, ask it to search the database and see what we have. And it yeah. already narrowed it down to one choice, which is Russian olive, Elagnus angustifolia, which is a common riparian weed. In fact, let's look at some pictures here. That's a dead ringer to the color yeah, of exactly. your plant. And this is it as a problem in a riparian area. Is it still sold? It's still sold, correct. And, uh, and you can see if you look at that, that that is uh, very similar to an olive flower, which has four petals. And also the fruit looks a little bit similar to an olive. And that's how it got its name, Russian olive. And this is becoming a bigger and bigger riparian weed in the western United States. OK, why don't you grab another plant? Uh, which one would you like to identify? one. Where did you find that? Just growing all over the garden. Okay, so let's again answer this question that it's in an urban environment and it's common in a garden. Okay, so now let's look at the growth form of this plant. And this one should be a fairly easy question. It's asking you if the plant grows upright, prostrate, creeping, or creeping with, with upright tips. So it looks like it grows prostrate. Yes, flat on the ground. Uh, life cycle is, this is clearly an annual. Would you agree? Yep. Okay, so the next question is asked, does it produce a milky sap? So just break off the stem and see if it uh, is, is milky. Okay. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Definitely milky. Okay, so it does produce a milky sap. Okay, so we included that it has a, definitely a milky sap. So how are the leaves arranged? Are there one or two leaves per node? There are two leaves per node. So two leaves per node mean they're opposite each other, and so that's opposite. Are the leaves simple or compounds? 
They're simple. They're simple, and do they have lobes? No. So they're not lobed. Is the margin toothed or not? It's not toothed. Okay, so it's entire, not toothed. Is there a petiole? There is a petiole, a short one. Okay, so it's present. Are there hairs on the plant? Nope. No hairs on the plant, so they're absent. Uh, there's no prickles, obviously, on that, or you would be uh, screaming <laughs> at me already. So they're absent. What's the venation like? Is it parallel, palmate, pinnate? Pinnate venation. Pinnate venation, okay. Let's look at some stem characteristics. So the, are the stems round or are they square? They're round. Okay, so they're not square. So I'll put no to stem square. There are lots of little flowers on that plant. Oh, yeah. They're very tiny. They're small. So there, are there leaves on the flowering stems? Yes. Yes. And there's no spines, again. So they're absent. And I won't even ask you flower color uh, because they're so small. So let's just search the database right now and see what we have. And it's given us two possible matches. And both of them are spurges. And they both look very much alike. And they're very <laughs> difficult to tell apart. You have to really look at hairs on the fruit. So as far as you're concerned, that's identified correctly as a spurge. Very common garden plant, uh, probably in every home in America. <laughs> OK, so that's broad leaves. Shall we do one more, which would be a grass now? OK. So pick a grass, mm -hmm. and we'll test the three categories here. We've done woodies, broad leaves, and now we're going to do the last one, which is a grass. Well, I'll choose this one. It looks quite different than the one I chose before. OK. Now, notice here that there's, there's even fewer choices for grasses than there are for woody and broadleaf plants. That particular plant, where did you find? I found it just growing in a field. Yep, so it's an agricultural plant. You found it probably right next to an agricultural field. So a field and forage crops. The growth form, is this upright, prostrate, it's, creeping? It's kind of upright, but kind of maybe growing more like this. Not Decumbent. Sure. But so it, it could go either way, but let's, let's just say upright right now. And if we get the wrong answer, if we can't find anything, then we'll go back and we'll change that answer. So let's say upright. And you can easily do that on this program. So now what's the life cycle? Is it an annual or is it a perennial? Um, I think it's uh, an annual. Yeah, it's an agricultural field. It's an annual. <laughs> do you see any plant hairs or hairs on the plant? I don't see any hairs. Yeah, they're absent. Now, remember what I told you about a ligule? Yes. See if you can find a ligule on that plant. Three choices are whether it has a membranous ligule, a hairy ligule, or no ligule at all. What do you think? And that, remember, that ligule is at the junction between the sheath and the blade. So I'm looking right where I, it should be, but I don't see anything at all. Okay, so it, in that particular case, it's, it's absent. So we don't have to answer the questions ligule length or even oracles. So let's answer the question of seed head branching. Is it once? branched with a spike or is it have multiple spikes on a single stalk or is it multiple branches like a panicle? So I see a single stalk with um, multiple spikes That's on that right. stalk. That's right. And does it have any awns or, and again, let's look and see what an awn looks like. It's this long spiny thing at the tip. There's like hairs, but there's not an awn on the right. coming okay. out. Okay, so let's say it, they're absent and now We'll search the database, and it gives us one choice, and it says it's Econocloa colona, or jungle rice. And you can see oh, yeah. from the inflorescence that it's very similar to yours. Exact same shape, yeah. Yes. So that's what that is. So we were able to, again, identify a grass using the <laughs> online database. So the only thing that I'm really concerned about is when I'm actually out in a field, I don't have my computer with me. So what do I do to identify something when I'm out in the mud? <laughs> well, actually, uh, two things. One is I am developing an app for this particular program so that you can use it out in the field on an iPhone if you have an iPhone. But otherwise, there are books available. And I mentioned earlier the Weeds of California and other Western states. It's a two-volume set. And uh, these books have photographs of 750 different species in them and uh, lots of information on the biology of these particular plants. So these can be used in the field and they can help you also to identify plants. So Annabelle, yeah, these books can be very valuable for use in the field. And, and we've summarized a lot of the different ways in which you can identify weeds. Of course, you can go to the herbarium and use dichotomous keys, but those are a little difficult and you need to have basically flowers to be able to correctly identify something. But you've also got a couple of different programs. 
The CDs don't require flowers, and you can identify things just based on any characteristic you have. The online one on the Weed Research and Information Center sometimes doesn't require flowers. Most of the time it does require flowers, but those can also be very useful. And then, of course, the books can also help you. So from now on, there should be no reason why you can't identify any weed in California.